eye. Okay. Those closed eyes out. Uh, next, uh, we will have a public comment. I have one speaker. And Matt? Thank you, Mayor. Um, Okay. Um, I w what I was concerned about was the order of the items on the agenda. Um, I think so. That, that's what's hoping maybe some other discussion. But, but assuming the agenda items order stays the same, I'm just going to throw out uh, some quick things. Um, the uh, one of the things I want to make clear about. Um, as far as the uh, decision on the water, I'm hoping that this decision for emergency, emergency interconnect is treated completely separately than the, the regular project because I, I, I think it's fair to say those should be looked at separately um, just because we had um, a decision made about the full project. Um, that doesn't mean that it, it should tie into this. Now, one, one thing I haven't heard discussed was the uh, the adjustable intake, because um, originally it's Max here. Max, come here. Um, I thought he said that was a three to four year band aid. Um, and I haven't heard anybody say anything about the adjustable intake and why that was only put in what on last August? Am I right? Um, can anybody comment on if that was a failure? It just didn't work the way we thought, or it is working and this is still an emergency, or. Um, I mean, that was a big expense. It was between hundred two hundred thousand dollars $200,000, right? Um, so why isn't that being mentioned as, I mean, there should be some accountability for that if now we're in an emergency situation. I don't, I don't think this is all new information, so. Um, and, uh, the, um, and, you know, it says, you know, one of the things on the, the documents that were posted on the website um, we're being forced to, to continue to actively try to comply. Well, I think we, if we spent that money on, on an adjustable intake, we're, we're actively complying. So I don't think we're in violation of what you know, we, we regulate, regulators are told us to do. Because um, that, that was fairly recent. So um, you know, I know we have, uh, you know, the last thing I want to say, uh, you know, Litchfield people are here tonight. I know. I talked to certain aldermen that had specific reservations regarding um, if Litchfield was in the red, um, if there was going to be some dredging that had to be done on their lake. I hope those questions are, if they haven't already been asked, I hope they get asked tonight before we make any further decisions. Um, I think that's only fair because I think uh, some of that may have not have been good information. I don't know where the information came from, but um, I don't think it was correct. So thank you very much. Yes. Um, can, can I ask Dan to comment about the adjustable valve? After our last meeting, we had just kind of a brief discussion, um, Dan and I, um, about that valve. Did you have a chance to look into that and find out how that's working? I can tell you right now. Yes, please. Good evening. <laughs> Uh, first, let me. Uh, this will be a little crude, okay? But it'll be kind of quick. But basically, you have you have your intake in the lake. So uh, I know this will be easy for a lot of people to see, but you have your intake in the lake like this, okay? And there was a there was a port at like uh, six feet, twelve feet, and on this side there was eighteen feet, okay, down from the surface of the water. So uh, and. Remember, I wasn't here two years ago, so a lot of this is from what I read, you know, that kind of thing. Okay? So at one, uh, one point here, you guys had to go out here and you had to do an emergency deal on your intake. Okay? So this 18-foot uh, deal here was buried under two feet of sill. Okay? So they did a dredging project, and I think the radius was about 50 foot out from that, from that uh, tower at that time. And the way this kind of works really crudely here, okay, is there's a hose attached to this, and it kind of runs up like this, and this is attached to a wheel valve up here, okay? So you can adjust this wheel, and you can move the intake down and up. And the way I understand it now is it's set at eight foot, okay? 
So that's where it's at, eight foot down below the surface. Okay. So what I don't know is, is I don't know if your two foot of sill is back in there where it was, or what that uh, distance is. Okay. Uh, Friday, we're supposed to go out and do soundings on the lake, and part of that will be to do some of that over by the intake, and then we'll have a better idea of where the lake lies in all those levels. Okay. Who's been checking that until now? Who's been responsible for checking what we were told was called the sweet spot, the, the cleanest water of the lake? Um, I suppose it would be Jim, because he is the, the plan operator out there. But um, I, I'm not sure what his ability is to be able to get out there to adjust that, because I'm not sure that the city owns a boat to get there. So the only time he would be able to get out there would be if they were to get a boat from someplace to get there. Okay. So that's where it stands today. That's what I know. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay. I just find it odd that we spent two hundred fifty thousand dollars on a valve that we can't get to to adjust or to check the water. Uh, well, uh, I can't speak to that. I only know right. that uh, you know that's where it stands today. Yeah, okay. that's how do you determine if the is Actually, they'll do this by, uh, they call it soundings, that they'll send a uh, sound and then basically how quickly it, uh, I'm, I'm not a uh, scientist by any stretch of the imagination, but that will give you that depth. Now, the, the good news is, is that they have the information from the prior, uh, that the depths were in the lake, I think at least for 2006 and for 2012 and maybe even further back than that. So based on that, you should be able to plot some curves and stuff on what you're, what's happening with your siltation in the lake. Uh, in this particular instance, uh, Miko can go out and get us the soundings and then that information has to go into the database and then that will give you your volumes in the lake. Are they also doing lake two? Oh, I do not. I do not have them under contract for that. But if uh, de uh, depending on how the soundings come out for Lake One, it uh, <coughs> might be a good idea for us to go out there and do Lake Two. One thing about Lake Two, it is up about a foot from where it was when we switched over from Lake One, so it's still down about four feet. Uh, but we won't have any past data to put against that. So it would be purely. You know, that's what we see out there today. But you, but you, in the last meeting, you questioned the depth of the lake. At least give you an idea of the depth of the lake in Lake Two. Then, if if we uh, contract with them to go out and also do Lake Two, at this time they're not contracted to do that. We may not right though. That you you were questioning the depth before. Now you at least get the depth of the lake too. No, I, I'm suggesting that if we got if we get the soundings and we get the data back from Lake One, that should kind of try to give you an estimated volume of what you have in water in Lake One. If that, uh, depending on how comfortable you are with what the uh, findings are for that, we could also go out and do Lake 2 and get a total volume of what you have on hand. There's no way to know, of course, how much it's going to rain over the next, you know, six months, one year, one and a half years, whatever. But that kind of gives you an idea of, you know, where you can stand. Wouldn't it make sense to go ahead and do both lakes so that we do know how much water we have? Uh, yes, but that's that's going to be probably over what I can spend. It'll have to be approved by you folks. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, let's move on then to um, old business. And Cindy, you want to uh, go ahead and. Uh, Talk about uh, IARWC update. Yes. Um, since our last council meeting, the Illinois Olympial Regional Water Company did have a meeting, and uh, we decided to go. Um, the last meeting, I presented several options of plant size that we had been discussing, and um, the company decided to build a four million gallon per day water treatment plant, and so I put um, at each of your places the finalized plan for that. Um, the information that is relevant is there. Uh, the lines haven't changed or anything like that, so I will include the map. It's the same. 
um, we did decide that this size would um, help us keep our, our rate in a reasonable range. It's a good beginning point for us as far as how much capacity we would already be using. It allows us for some growth um, to take in some communities that have showed a deep interest in our project but need for some things to dissipate before they'd like to become involved. So um, we wanted to build in some growth ability. So we are looking toward the future also, making sure that we have some ability to add capacity if we need to do that, if we're um, seeing a lot more interest. So we are looking at the long range survivability of that plan. So this is the final plan for us. Um, we are waiting for some of the people who have to report back to us on the environmental study, but as far as I know, that's the last thing we've been waiting for on our application to USDA, so we've been very fortunate and many people have helped us to get that done so that we can get in line for, for having our whole project funded by rural development so that's pretty exciting um i will say that also during the conversation at the water company we discussed the idea of pearl and bill funding the the six and a half million interim and um, we discussed it at length all of the board members were unanimous that we didn't feel comfortable with Carlinville doing that. Um, it's a group project. We're really close to a letter of conditions, we believe, from rural development which can enable us to borrow that on our own and not have to do that. And some expenses have been moved out that we don't have to spend um, as quickly as we thought we would. So we, as a company, they decide, we decided that we don't want Carlinville to do that. So I, I, would, I will be asking that we table um, the support for providing security item. Um, the company no longer wishes that Carlinville would do that, um, at least not solely. So uh, we also discussed the emergency interconnection there. Um, I know that it was brought up that it should be a separate item. It's not, it's the same plan, so it's difficult to see it as a separate item. Uh, the company doesn't see it as a separate item. They see it as the beginning leg of our entire project to meet the need of one of its members. Um, and our, our other members are, are excited to see, you know, the project moving forward and the dirt moving and uh, they don't really care that it started this end and not that end. So um, it's the same project, same line that's going to be there to serve Carlinville when the, co the project's complete. It's not a different line, not a different project. So uh, we did discuss that. Um, they're they're um, all excited and on board about how we're going to handle that. So um, because we don't have a letter of conditions, yet but we believe we're very close to getting one this whole item may be a little premature from the company's standpoint so um, i also wanted to address one other item um, this week i did have a couple of questions about my level of compensation from the company itself for my service to carlinville and i just wanted to address that for the public because i am not compensated by the water company and I'm compensated by the city of Carlinville to be an alderman. So, as we all are, for the same race. And so I asked just um, our attorney to make sure that there's no allowance in the future that any board member could do something that would, you know, be corrupt or whatever. So um, he did say that there's a state statute that covers nonprofit corporations such as us and our bylaws um, that directors are not compensated volunteers. We give our time and whatever talents we possess in service to our communities, we are not compensated for those. Um, we can be in reimbursed for out-of-pocket expenses. We have not done that, and there aren't any really that I know of. So, um, but that's limited as well because we're going to receive federal <coughs> finance assistance from USDA, and there are a lot of anti-fraud, anti-kickback laws that prohibit compensation. So we will be under strict federal pro prohibitions of doing anything of that sort. So I just wanted to address that the, I know that the um, speculation is out there that I have dishonest gain in mind for why I serve the city in that role. And I just wanted to make sure that you all know that um, whether we agree or don't agree, I don't think we should confuse my character with that issue. So I'm not compensated, I will never be compensated. And we're putting safeguards in to make sure that in the future no one is confident. So um, I think that wraps up what we discussed at company meeting. It was good, positive, forward direction. So.
Thank you, Cindy. Questions? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Cindy, um, the new plan <coughs> took our, the size of our pipe from 18 down to 16? Yes. And that's where it will stay then is at a 16 inch. Right. That was Are you max. still putting in the 36 to 30 and then what, down to 16 for us? Is that the plan? It goes 24, 20, 16, 8. Okay. And the 8 is not, um, <coughs> we're 16. The only 8 is 24, 20, 16, 8. Okay. 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 Do they own their line? Yeah, do they own their water lines? Yes. Okay. I didn't know if American Water put them in for them. No. If American Water owned them. Okay. And then I have another question. I saw on Facebook that the Carlinville Rural Water Company, or whatever they're called, um, is refinancing. They had $2.2 million in debt that they're fi refinancing and that they were going to hook up to Henderson Water. They are already hooked up to Henderson Water. Mm -hmm. They've always used a mixture of Carlinville and Henderson. Mm -hmm. They did come to Public Works and they indicated that they were having some issues with keeping, I believe it was chlorine, but I could be incorrect about that, so you'd have to check with maybe Alship or somebody from over there. They were having some trouble keeping a certain type of chemical treatment in their lines once it got past a certain point. And their um, engineers had them do a test to see which one was holding that in the lines better, Carlinville Water or Henderson Water. They came to Public Works um, and they talked briefly about that. So they may have switched over to, they, I know they were going to take Carlinville Water only for a while, see how that residual chemical was, and then switch over to Henderson because they also have EPA regulations, so they needed to solve their issue. Um, so maybe that's what they're doing now. Um, those are their own board's issues, so I, I can't say that I've attended so that, their board. And that $2.2 million debt doesn't roll into... No, <coughs> just as Carlinville's debts don't roll into the company. Yeah, well, I just want to make sure. Sure. Yeah. All right, thank you, Cindy. Any other questions? Okay, thank you, Cindy. With that, um, Cindy has made... Um, Motion, I assume, right? Do you have to have a motion to table the item? No, you don't have to. Um, well, I don't think there's really anything to vote on. Okay, so we'll go on. Um, we're going to table the support for providing security for the issuance of an interim financing, and we're also going to table to seek interim uh, funding to construct emergency interconnection. So that brings us now down to the presentation of one proposal by Hillsdale officials, is that you? I did ask to have that put on here. Um, I know this is not a happy subject with some people. However, I feel that we owe it to the citizens of Carlinville to do a fair and equal look at apples to apples pricing. Now that we've got the price per line, per mile of the line, um, I think that we owe it to the people of Carlinville just to take a look at what Litchfield has to offer and give them an opportunity to really give us a presentation that they really didn't have um, initially. So I've had a lot of questions from people asking why are we doing what we're doing, why won't we look at Litchfield, so I want to make an honest effort to really look at Litchfield. Before we go on, uh, Beth, I'm going to turn this over to our attorney, uh, Dan O'Reilly. Well, I think that I'm assuming this is in the form of a motion to reconsider because the city's already considered Otter Lake, dredging the lake, Litchfield, and decided to go with the water concept. Well, it's except Dan. Early on in well, no, discussions, I mean, it would no. have to be a motion to get yes. it back on the floor. Okay. And a motion to reconsider if it's being brought back six months, which this would not be proper because the Litchfield question was answered when the council voted to proceed 
with the water concept in IARWC. And the motion to reconsider, uh, and, I, and I've got your administrative rules, the city's administrative rules, your, mine, and ours, and it says reconsideration. And so if the, you were going to ask the council to reconsider whether or not they should proceed with Litchfield over the water concept, that would have had to been done at the same meeting or the first regular meeting according to administration rules 1 to 11 you uh, it would have had to been taken at that same time it's my understanding i wasn't in this role that no motion to reconsider litchfield any of the other concepts was made so a final action was taken to proceed with the water concept which later became irwc the other options were not chosen, they were all rejected, along with dredging, water lake, other things. And uh, if a motion to reconsider is made, it has to be made by someone who voted for the water concept to start with. It cannot be made by an older person who was on the losing side of the vote. Now I would and that's also the way Robert's Rules reads, which is the next section in your city code. We go from you, motion to reconsider, to B. And I know there's, in the motion to reconsider, it talks about the, you know, six months expiration. But that, I think, was referring to, and I don't know what they were thinking in 1996, the situations in which no action or no final action had been taken. Now, if a member of the prevailing side was willing to make a motion to reconsider and this council was willing to vote on that, I would still caution them against it. And the reason I would caution against it is because Illinois law is pretty clear. Uh, and there's court cases on this going back many years. One of the key court cases is when the council has voted on a proposition and there is no motion for reconsideration. The council may not reconsider its action after adjournment of the meeting if the rights of other persons have intervened. And so that if it gets on camera, back to your attorneys, that's Kankakee versus Small. Now, the rights of other persons have intervened. The council took an action, and it would be similar to if the county board took an action and someone a year later into a three-year contract decided they wanted to reconsider that. Other rights have been affected. Now in our case, the city entered into an agreement with USDA Rural Development. They received a grant and those federal funds in the amount of $30,000 were transferred to Illinois Olivia Regional Water Company to form the water concept which became that concept. The USDA moved forward in reliance on the city of Carlinville's actions and a great deal of work, which Cindy just outlined, more of it's been done in reliance on Carlinville passing this ordinance. And for example, Illinois Alluvial hired an attorney, they drafted bylaws, they hired engineers, Max Middlar of Hennigan Associates. She just referred to more of the recent work that's been done. The rights impacted by our actions include the rights of Bunker Hill, Jerseyville Rural Water, Dorchester, others. They've all taken action in reliance on what Carlinville has done. And there's no question that the rights of many other people are now at stake, including uh, Hennigan Associates, Max Middledorf, other people. They've taken action and performed work in reliance on Carlinville's vote. And that reliance in the, in the law, when people sue over such things, is called detrimental reliance. I relied on the fact that you passed an ordinance, you took certain actions, you applied to the USDA, you asked the USDA, a mountain of paperwork has been done with USDA, and you've taken those actions in reliance on it. And so, the, this council couldn't reverse its decision if it had to. It simply cannot at this point. And there is no 
I mean, the parliamentary procedure is you're asking this council to consider something they've already considered. Whether or not there's new information, the fact is there's a lot of new information with Illinois Alluvial. But the council cannot reconsider that action. And as your attorney, uh, I believe, A, it's out of order to proceed with anything besides what you're doing. It's going to subject the city perhaps the lawsuits for people who've relied on these things, the engineers would be the first place. But also it's simply uh, improper uh, to proceed that way. Now, if the council were to insist on it, then it has to be a person who voted for the water concept would have to make a motion to allow, to to say we're going to reconsider the city's commitment to the water concept and thereby allow this new information from Litchfield to proceed. And I've so advised the mayor that procedurally that's how it would have to be. This is not, final action was taken. You simply cannot go back and undo it at this point. Yes, yeah. Just a question of procedure then. That's very interesting. Why then were we able to go back and, no offense, Dan, but reconsider what had occurred after the, the council had taken action? I don't know anything about that. I wasn't here. I don't know. I mean, that's the answer. I wasn't here. So I don't know anything about what had occurred in I was hired in December. We had not entered into another agreement yeah. with another company. Right. We didn't have another He's saying that we had to intervene into it. I'm sorry, I just am unfamiliar with the example you're giving. Uh -huh. Yeah, we did so, not have, we know. had not entered into another management company along the way. We had, we waited for that. Yes, Kim? Uh, my question is you're pointing out the engineers and people like that. They've done their services, and as long as they're paid, we are doing nothing against them. I, I don't know that they would consider that, but you certainly, by opening this process up again, you're certainly taking action against an agreement you've already entered into, and also <coughs> the promise has been made to USDA that that 30000 which was transferred, was it was passed through money, it was federal money, <coughs> That money already went to IERWC. So you've, there have been many actions taken in reliance on that vote. And so to say that willy-nilly, six, seven months later, you can overturn that, that vote, that wouldn't work for the county board, that wouldn't work for the township, that wouldn't work with any board. I'm going to go out of order right now. I uh, have already asked individuals to speak during the public comments. But Mayor Doherty, if you have something to say, I'm going to let you go ahead and say it. Thank you. That's great. Welcome to you. First of all, I want to say I concur with your attorney's uh, assessment of the situation. That is, uh, that's the law. And in absence, however, of a motion to reconsider, I'm on the agenda, and you've devised as you have under the Open Meetings Act, that I'm going to be here. I don't know who came to hear me, but I'm part of the agenda. And uh, whether my presentation is reconsidered with or without a motion, I'd still like to do it, if you will allow it. Um. Mayor Doherty, I'll give you um, five minutes if you want to come up front and give your presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I don't mean this to be confrontational. I'd rather it be a spirit of cooperation. Um, some, more than a few of you, are, I'm sure, are wondering why these guys keep coming back. Well, I'll tell you, it's because I think it's the best thing for both our communities. And you know you may disagree, but I've looked at all the numbers um, from your your uh, approved uh, proposals and uh, the different sizes and this type of thing. We have a four million dollar or four million gallon per day facility at this point. We're offering hard numbers at this to that tonight 
um, that nobody has been able to beat. And it would still allow you, I mean, you've got a, I've been impressed by your representative from the current. That's the second time I've met him and he knows what he's talking about. You'd still be able to use Carbonville water and mix it with Litchfield water whenever you're able to do that. You can't do that with the alluvial system. I've given you examples of rates. Does everybody have a copy? And I'll go over as quickly as I can. I'm not sure I can get it done in five minutes, but basically we're offering a price of $2.73 per thousand gallons based on your current usage. None of your numbers have come close to that. The line from Carlinville to Litchfield is at least two miles shorter. And we have county, the county representatives on board to allow you easements for most of that way, which, which would reduce your costs even more, probably by as much as $2 million, maybe even more than that, if you do a design build. So I'm just putting it out there for, this, for our citizens and your citizens that you know this is a 40 year commitment uh, you're making a choice to connect to basically American Water, who I heard in Bunker Hill was raising rates, and that's the reason Jerseyville Rural wanted out of their system. Now, now you're going to connect Cronenville? I don't know. Some things just don't make sense to me. But I wanted to get that out there to you, that uh, we have hard numbers here, basically the same numbers we proposed uh, 16 months ago. And there wasn't even an attempt to negotiate. I know you don't have a seat at the table, but we would have listened to maybe freezing rates for five years or some other negotiation. We're not unreasonable, but cooperating together would allow us to freeze our rates and not raise our rates for our citizens and give you a decent rate so that you can have a uh, margin in there from what you're, you're charging right now for your infrastructure. Just simple numbers, black and white. And if it sounds too good to be true, they're right here. I just had a couple of questions if uh, you are still willing to answer them. Absolutely. Are you offering us a seat at the table when you vote on water rates? Uh, that's not legal, okay. as your counsel will tell you. I was just checking. However, can, um, I, can I finish this? Sure. That? The seat that you're going to have at your table is going to be determined, your, your prices are going to be determined at, at, with your costs. I'm aware of that. So, and I, you've already stated your costs are more than what we're proposing. Okay. Are you also offering to spread the debt service for our connection to you over your users or just ours? It would be yours. Okay. And sure that's the same know. situation you've got. To it is not the same situation. We have a deal with No. So, mm -hmm. um, where's, the, where's the 9 million 500,000 come from? The cost, that is a cost that's within the total project. I guess there's some confusion about that. The number that you're seeing for the connection from Carlinville to Jersey County Rural Water is embedded in the total project for alluvial. So it's not a separate project, it's a piece of the project. And that entire piece would be spread over all of the users of alluvial, which there are, we estimate 25,000 now. So. I just want to be clear that when we try to talk about apples to apples, it sounds very intelligent and good, but it's never going to be apples to apples. These are two different, completely different entities with completely different end goals. So I appreciate the need to do that, but it's not going to be that simple. So, I mean, I think $2 looks great per thousand. I'm not sure how you really make it for that, but we're certainly not doing that now. But um, I mean, to me, it's just, you have, you've, you've listened, and we've listened before, and I, I, I understand that. But you also have other entities that have come alongside you and, and agreed to shoulder some of this burden for their good and yours, and, and Litchfield is not doing that, and they cannot do that. So, to me, there's some disconnect on how that's apples to apples. But that's just I'll finish with the fact that, okay, thank you, that the margin will be between 748 thousand and a million one per year to take care of any water line expense you're going to have. Thank you, Doug Doni. I appreciate your Thank you for your Thank questions. Can I ask you a couple? Just a couple. Since you were here the last time, 
I've heard different things. I've heard it's been one rate increase you've had in Litchfield. I've heard two. Which one is it? One or two that you've had? Zero. Uh, I know people in Litchfield. They've had rate increases. Last year. Not this year. Okay. Last year. But you've had rate increases. Yes. And you're still talking your leg is surface water over an aquifer. Yes. And aquifers are healthier. There's good there arguments for and against us. Yes. Well, anything. People can argue all day long. Okay. Then we all know. That. All right. Thank you for your time. No, John, please don't go. Are you an engineer? No. Okay. But you are the water treatment I No, he's an alderman. You're an alderman? Yes. Okay. I, you keep hearing this, I prefer <coughs> better water. Will you speak to that so that people understand <coughs> that the end result, clean water, is regulated by the EPA? You're putting out clean water that meets the guidelines of the EPA. That's correct. And Aquifer puts out clean water that meets the guidelines of the EPA. It's just how you treat this water versus how you treat this water. Mm -hmm. That's the difference in And the Aquifer the two. has uh, issues with uh, appliances, water heaters. Right, um, we've heard your, that. Your uh, infrastructure lines and that type of Correct. With the chemicals. <laughs> but if we are the end user, and we are buying water for X number of dollars. We really don't care. I mean, no offense to you. We don't care how much you have to spend to treat that water and get it to us as clean, potable water. That's good. All we care about is how much we're paying per thousand. And if this is two dollars, and what would you say, two dollars and seventy cents? Would you tell Two seventy-three. Two seventy-three. Per thousand. Yes. And this is four seventy. Actually, it's two, two eighty something for the first five hundred. The two eighty three, then two sixty, and two sixty five for anything over that. So if you're using two million gallons, but it's even less than two seventy three. So how much is per gallon? <coughs> Two eighty three. Two eighty three. Two eighty three. Okay. So we're going to hit your lower rate regardless, because yes. as long as we keep for our farms. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Okay. So, yes. That correct me if I'm wrong. Did we not sit here and our previous attorney told us to move forward and time the numbers before we made sure what we were going to do? That oh. there was always a chance to get out. Sure, we were waiting for numbers for a year and a half. And so now that we have numbers, we're being told that our attorney gave us bad information and we can't. Well, just to correct, I've, I've said no such thing. Not I was, you. I was not previous, involved as a previous said, attorney. Previous attorney what told I told us to stick around until we got numbers. I, I don't know about that. I guess what I'm saying, and it appears that Mayor Litchfield agreed with me, the council can't reconsider this even if you wanted to. And so unless there's a motion made by an older person who voted in favor of this, and I wouldn't advise making that, but I can't stop you, but it has to be someone who voted for the water concept would have to make a motion to reconsider. Otherwise, I would advise the mayor that it would have failed for lack of a, a motion. All right. There being no um, motion on the floor, we uh, will go ahead and table uh, the presentation of the water proposal. Thank you, Mayor Darby. Thank you for coming. And we will now move on to Kim. You have the royal lawsuits. Yes, ma'am. You have all received the paper. And I have a few questions about the foil water. Well, I'm, I'm going to report on the public record, but I'm not going to comment on active lawsuits uh, unless we're in executive session, but I will provide the information authority in the public record, which I know some of you are at those hearings that you're familiar with. Mm -hmm. And what I want to talk about is part of public record. Our attorney and this council advised us in April of, let me make sure the date.
I'm sorry, I was kind of baffled on the last thing. Can we really not come back? No, I want to do this. No, oh, we can come back. I can. April 3rd, April 3rd, 2017. Thank you. April 3rd, 2017, Carlinville City Council directs their attorney to provide all records requested prior to that date and none were ever provided. Our attorney, and we all voted on it unanimously, that we wanted the FOIA's reply to. I want to know why. At this point, it has not been done. Well, again, I was not the attorney or even part of the city until December, so I don't, I, I just wasn't here at that time. I can, I can update you with the current status of these cases, but I, it, I, I would not have the information to go back in time to guess why events didn't happen. The Attorney General happen. stated that they were to turn everything over, and it has never happened. That doesn't look good for this city. How much is this going to cost us in attorney fees and fines? I don't know. How is it happening? Uh, I mean, if there was a unanimous vote to do something, it should be done. It's that easy. What do you advise as the attorney? Well, these cases have been handled by Mr. Sharon. I can advise you the status of these four cases, but I am not prepared to go back in time and speak for Mr. Sharing or Mr. Bertinetti because I simply wasn't here. And uh, if I were to speak for them, I'm afraid I would misspeak. You all were here. I, you know what happened or didn't happen. I was not here. <coughs> cannot make an intelligent comment on that. I can tell you where things are today, but I cannot go back in time. Where are they today? Well, in uh, 17 MR 25, uh, which is the oldest John Craft set, case it's set, and uh, July 10th, and some of the local folks were there, uh, there was an order entered directing, it was called a motion for partial summary judgment is what uh, the Chicago attorneys asked for. It was granted and those records were provided to Mr. Kraft and there's been nothing set in that case since then. That's on 710. It's when that happened. Uh, You're saying those materials were provided? Yes. Okay. By Mr. Uh, Shearing. Uh, okay because I was copied on the motion. In fact, Mr. Sharon said he would provide them uh, within a few days. I don't recall the order, but I know he provided them. The, the John Kraft case is uh, 17 MR 82, and that actually is the only case of these four that has a hearing set. That's for August 14th at 2.30 p.m. And that's uh, Attorney Bourdais, again, out of Lovey in, Lovey in Chicago. And then in 17 MR 101, Robert Bogue, uh, and I, I just put these together as craft cases, but Mr. Bogue is one of Mr. Kraft's associates. There is no hearing date set in that. And 17 MR 126, which is Lisa Thomas, who was a member of that website and associated with Mr. Kraft, uh, there's no, uh, no hearing set in that case either. There's only one of these cases where there's actually a hearing date set, and uh, that's the case I referred to. Why do we have to wait and go to court before we can provide them with the I. This is how the case is proceeding. These are decisions that were made to proceed, and... Uh, Mr. Shearing isn't here. If you want to talk to Mr. Shearing, I'm sure he'd be glad to come. And we can discuss that at length in a closed session. But the public record, which anybody can access, 
uh, those of you who weren't there uh, can get this online. Uh, and, uh, but it's no secret. And uh, the wisdom of past actions, I'm not going to comment on. I, I support uh, the council's action, and uh, hopefully we'll get these resolved. And uh, I have great respect for the opposition. Uh, they're a 33 person firm in downtown Chicago. I think they have a lot of expertise in this area. They have more expertise than I have. But to say what would have, could have, should have been done in the past, uh, I don't think that's real helpful for me to say. Any other comments? A question. And I don't know if we can speak about this on the open floor, but is there a way to stop the other lawsuits by? giving them the information that they've requested? Can you do that and just be done with it? Or do you have to proceed with court hearings? I think there were many issues in these court hearings, and even in the Attorney General's opinion, which I made sure you got copied on and put in there. I mean, some of the issues, like the issue in that case, which the Attorney General issued a non-binding opinion, and one of the issues was well, the issue in that case was whether or not, and again, this was, I just read that because I wasn't involved in filing it, whether or not they're a commercial entity. In the MR25 case, uh, Mr. Kraft was asking the judge in Springfield to determine that he was a member of the media. And Judge Bell's, uh, not, excuse me, not Judge Bell's, I have to think of the name of the, the uh, judge, but he declined to get into that issue. So there's a number of issues, and those, I think, were reasons for the initial denial of the uh, records. Uh, but I think Dan Shearing is a good attorney, and I think he's working to resolve this in the best interest of Carlinville. Are we going to talk about these in a closed session? I wasn't planning to. Oh, there's I, I, what, I'm, what, what I'm offering to you to do is I can call Dan and you can, if you all wish to go on a closed session sometime in the future. But uh, I we think that would be better because you. your questions tonight right. are really, he's, he was there at the get go. So, and he's been the one responding to these. I entered my appearance when I became city attorney so that I would be copied on the information. Right. And so. we're glad you did. And we hope that in the future you can take over these sorts of things and we don't have to pay a, a second attorney. At least that's my opinion. Um, I hope at some point they stop, actually, that, you know, if somebody sends us a FOIA, we fill the FOIA and move on. But we we're spending a FOIAs. lot of money with <coughs> attorneys fighting something that it turns out we had no no way to stand on. Now he did respond to the commercial aspect, correct? I mean, I know it's non-binding, but he said he does not see that Mr. Kraft is a commercial. I mean, from what I read here, That's that he the said attorney general's not, position, right. which Are we gonna to be that? truthful, I was surprised to see this because uh, apparently they aren't in a hurry since March of seventeen to issue their. <coughs> So, I mean, it's apparently not a big priority in Springfield either. I, it doesn't matter to me how big a priority it is right. in Springfield. What matters to me is how much money we're spending, taxpayer money, That's a fair question. on attorneys to fight something that looks like a losing battle from going forward. So can we stop And lovey, that? lovey, foia my bills and Mr. Shearing's bills, those bills that we've submitted as they have in the past so say that again they have foia'd our bills oh have we received a bill from mr sharon i don't I know. asked about it some months ago and we haven't had one for like over a year yeah. Yeah. so we don't even know how much this is going to cost us okay. I, I just find that we have many foyers and and i don't believe these are going to go away i mean one of the more recent FOIAs from Lovey to Lovey was uh, asking for a chemical that we used at the sewer plant that went back, I believe it was 16 years, our usage of a chemical, which again caused Mr. Held and other people to spend a lot of time 
to gather information <coughs> for what purpose we don't know but like I say they're a 33 member firm in downtown Chicago I respect them as adversaries I wouldn't underestimate them but I also know that apparently they have the funds and the money to go after the Carlin bills the Sawyer bills and the other people of the world and I'm not sure for I'm not sure how that gets paid for so anyway but we'll continue well, we know to know how ours gets paid for the Jan, and I think that it's time that we take whatever action we can take mm -hmm. on our end to satisfy well I this. hope that to be truthful I hope we can bring you a resolution set that would be wonderful as I have expressed my opinion to the council in the uh, other case that, uh, that is not related to FOIA that's going on I regard litigation as everybody loses and people think they've got uh, very good reasons to enter into it but oftentimes as the litigation goes along a lot of things change it doesn't mean people shouldn't go into court but it takes up a lot of resources and takes up my time uh, trying to keep track of Mr. Kraft and his cases and that's money that this council could be spending on on water to be truthful. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I, I respect your opinion and I will express that to Mr. Sharon. Any other questions? Okay, if not we'll move on down the agenda. Right now we're going to have the recognition of Girl Scout and um i would like to have emma may smith come forward thank you emma you are quite the young lady here you've got lots of national recognitions and 